Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So let's resume our studies on Revelation. So let's look at Revelation chapter 14, and we covered up to verse 6. Now, I apologize I'm not using the whiteboard for now. Um, I have not fully recuperated yet, but once I fully recuperate, I'm sure that we can go back to the whiteboard soon. Now, I am glad, however, that at Revelation 14, 6, as you might recall, that we heavily used the blackboard for the teachings concerning about the everlasting gospel. Now, the everlasting gospel, as you might recall, we went through a lot of things concerning dispensationalism. That is one of the many different gospels in the Bible. Now, I'm going to try to explain it this way at Revelation 14, 6. I've already explained word for word on this verse, so I'm not going to explain it again. But I'm going to give a few additional notes concerning about Revelation 14, 6 that you might find to be interesting. So the first thing to notice is that you'll notice that this everlasting gospel is preached Notice the wording here is non-Jewish. It's for nations around the world, different nations around the world, Gentiles, them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. So this everlasting gospel is something for the Gentiles. It will be for the Gentiles. The Jews their gospel, as you might recall, is going to relate to the gospel of the kingdom. That was recalled at the previous video. The gospel of the kingdom is preached throughout all the world at Matthew chapter 24. But I also mentioned that at Revelation chapter 14 verse 6, that that kind of language where it's preached throughout all the world matches with Matthew 24 and Revelation 14, 6, showing that the gospel that's preached at the end times is something that matches with each other, Matthew 24, Revelation 14, and it does not match with Paul's go Christian gospel. Paul calls it my gospel. Paul mentions about the death burial, and resurrection of Christ. In Revelation 14, verse 6, we see nothing of that sort. We see at verse 7 that this is their gospel, that it is to fear God and to worship Him. Many saved Christians today, and let's be honest to some of you, how many of you have failed worshiping God? How many of you have failed fearing God as much as you should have? So, because of that, we can see that Revelation 14, 6, and 7, the wording about the gospel preached throughout all the world, matches with Matthew 24 about the gospel of the kingdom preached throughout all the world. So, because these two gospels match with each other, and they're also very different from Paul's church gospel, then this means that Revelation 14, that gospel is for end times, whereas Paul's gospel is for today. It has nothing to do with the tribulation. So even though we can see the similarity with Matthew 24 and Revelation 14, there is a distinction nevertheless, because Matthew 24, that gospel is the gospel of the kingdom, and that is preached to Jews when you look at Matthew 4. I've already explained that before at the previous video. Whereas Revelation 14, this gospel is preached toward Gentiles. We see that, where it's preached throughout to different nations around the world. So we can plainly see that, that this is the everlasting gospel for Gentiles, whereas the gospel of the kingdom is reached to Jews. Now, just because it's going to be preached to Jews, the gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout all the world, according to Matthew 24. So we see that. However, it's going to be, it's because it is a Jewish gospel, 
It is going to be preached to Jews all over the world. That's the idea. Because remember, Jews are a scattered bunch of people and they're spread throughout all the world. James, which is written toward the tribulation, it mentions that James 1.1 1, 1, to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. So that's the reason why that we know that the gospel of the kingdom, it will be preached throughout all the world as well, but this is for Jews around the whole world. And then Revelation 14, this is a Gentile gospel. Okay, so I hope that that was a lot of fun for you to understand on dispensationalism and the gospels. Now, we can obviously tell the difference why there would be a everlasting gospel for Gentiles and then the gospel of the kingdom for Jews. Because the gospel of the kingdom, right? So the Jews are looking for their Messiah because according to Judaism, Jews have been waiting for their king, their Davidic king, their Messiah for millennia. That's why the gospel of the kingdom is applied to Jews. The everlasting gospel can apply more toward Gentiles. Why? Because the Gentiles, they're under that Antichrist kingdom. So you'll notice that at verse 10, that there's a damnation of hell. Why? Because of verse 9 of accepting the worship of the Antichrist and his mark. So God at Revelation 14 verse 7 wants them to ignore their Gentile king, the Antichrist, and wants them to worship God, God Almighty being the true king. Now, uh, the Gentiles king is going to be the Antichrist, and God wants the Gentiles to reject their Gentile king and to go to Jesus Christ instead. Now, obviously, the Antichrist, he is, I know some of you are thinking that he is mingled with Jewish blood, but nevertheless, the whole world, the Gentiles, who do they recognize as their king? The Antichrist. So that's what I mean by Gentiles king. So I hope there's no misunderstanding or confusion over there. But anyways, uh, returning to the main point at hand, we can see why that the everlasting gospel is distinctly Gentile. And then the Jews, they have their own gospel, which is the gospel of the kingdom. But I also mentioned that if you notice this chapter, this is Revelation chapter 14. And you'll notice verse 1, I already mentioned to you, we can see the 144,000 Jews already up at heaven. So if they're already up at heaven, the 144,000, and not only that, there's the 144,000, they're supposed to preach and minister throughout all the world. What kind of gospel are they preaching, the 144,000, before this everlasting gospel is preached at verse 6? See? So that means that the gospel of the kingdom is preached throughout all the world before this everlasting gospel is preached throughout all the world at Revelation 14.6. So there are two things which I kind of mentioned before, but now I can explain it further. So one, the gospel of the kingdom is preached at the beginning part of the tribulation. But then number two, because it shows there's an earlier period of the tribulation, then it shows that perhaps three and a half years of the tribulation is too small. That it's not just a latter three and a half, but there must be a beginning period of the tribulation as well. So this could support the fact of the seven-year tribulation. So this shows possibility of it. Now, if we return to our main text at Revelation chapter 14, rightly dividing all these things where it becomes very enlightening and very enriching, let's continue on over here. So now we're at verse 8, Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Okay, so another angel following the previous angel. The previous angel was giving the everlasting gospel. The next angel was talking about Babylon is fallen. Now Babylon, we're going to see later on at Revelation 17. 
It plays a role in the tribulation, and Babylon is the Roman Catholic Church. It is the Vatican. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city. So the city that rules over all the world and that is religious and that has uh, drunk the blood of martyrs, there's only one city that you can think of that fits the bill and that's the Vatican. Now, the Vatican, you'll notice it says because she made all nations drink. So the Vatican made all nations around the world drink of the what? Of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So she was drink. So what's going on is that the Roman Catholic Church made all nations around the world drink God's wine of wrath. Because you'll notice right here, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So the Roman Catholic Church is responsible for making all nations around the world partake in God's wrath. See that? And that is symbolized as the wine of wrath, God's wine of wrath. And notice over here that it's likened also to of her fornication. Why? Because she makes a league with all the other nations. She conglomerates with all the other nations. Hence, metaphorically and spiritually speaking, she's fornicating with them, combining with them. That's the idea over there. So God's going to judge all nations who make leagues and dealings with the Roman Catholic Church system. Which is why it is so interesting that in the early days of America, the Founding Fathers, they realized that the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church system, they were vehement against it, and that's why they did their uh, Constitution, Bill of Rights, etc., that they did not want the church to rule over the state because that was the Roman Catholic Church system. They wanted to separate those two from each other. So that's something interesting and important to understand over here. So God's going to judge the Roman Catholic system for doing that. Now, notice that over here it's past tense, Babylon is fallen. So meaning over here that at Revelation chapter 14, Remember, the 144,000, they got raptured up to heaven. And then Babylon, at verse 8, is already fallen. So we can see over here, we're nearing the end of the tribulation over here. That's what's going on. So if the 144,000 already raptured up to heaven, and we can already see here that Babylon is destroyed, we're nearing at the end of the tribulation. We're literally at the end of the end. We're getting over there.